Hello everyone, this is the Quest for Health YouTube channel and uh, today we're going to be talking about EMF sensitivity. Um, EMF sensitivity is an issue that we're hearing about more and more each year and it's in my opinion no coincidence as we are living in a time where smart meters, cell phone towers, computers, cell phones, and fluorescent light bulbs practically surround us at every angle. Now that a small percentage of the population are beginning to emerge with signs of EMF-related sickness, people are starting to ask questions. And that's why I thought it was important to make this video, because there is a lot of disinfo out there concerning this. People who are just trying to capitalize on, on this situation. A bunch of New Agers who are using this topic to push their philosophy and sell products that don't work. Meanwhile, no one is really getting to the bottom of what is going on. So out of, out of all the digging that I've done, I wanted to present what I feel does just that. And before we start, I just want to say that my heart goes out to anyone who may be dealing with this um, because I've also experienced EMF sensitivity in my life, so I know how it feels. It can get very bad. Um, I remember times when I couldn't even be in the same room as somebody with a computer on. And that's not all. One of the worst things is trying to get people to understand what you're going through. It's easy to come off looking um, a bit crazy at times. But I wanted to, I want to assure you that this is very real. And there are real reasons why this is happening to the body. Okay, let's take a look. This is uh, Dr. Andrew Goldsworthy, okay? Um, this is the man who wrote the research paper that I'm going to present to you today. Uh, he's a biologist who started out testing the effects of electromagnetic fields on plants, but ended up being one of the leading voices in explaining how all of this is affecting humans today. Okay, so when you head over to this website and you scroll down, you see some of um, Dr. Goldworthy's work with links at the bottom. And we're going to click on the dangers of electromagnetic smog. All right. We're going to start at the introduction of this particular paper here. And all the links to all this information will be provided in the description box below for anyone who wants to um, take a look at it in their own, in their spare time. But here we go. Introduction. Um, nearly all of us are exposed to weak, non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation from all sorts of electrical appliances and even the wiring in our own homes. If we could see it, it would look like a fog over almost everything, with particularly dense patches around people using mobile phones and DECT cordless phones. There would be other dense patches hovering permanently over their base stations and Wi-Fi routers. People have dubbed this electromagnetic smog, and like real smog, it can have serious effects on our health. Electrosensitive people have known this for a long time because they experience pain and other symptoms when they are exposed to the denser patches. However, the dangers go well beyond that. Many people have attributed the recent rise in the incidence of a large number of medical conditions such as asthma, other allergies, various cancers, diabetes, and multiple sclerosis to electromagnetic exposure. However, until very recently, no one has been able to explain just how this could happen. But we are now learning about the likely mechanisms and just how serious the situation is. Okay, Calcium loss makes cell membranes porous. The important factor giving adverse health effects from electromagnetic exposure seems to be the electromagnetically induced loss of calcium ions. Okay, now I want you to uh, make a mental note of that because this is the key to this is one of the keys to all of this here. Okay, from cell membranes. 
we have known for over 30 years that weak electromagnetic fields remove calcium ions from the surfaces of cell membranes. Okay? In theory, magnesium ions can be removed by similar mechanism. Okay? So we have two things going on here. When you're exposed to EMF radiation, your cell phones, your computers, your cell phone towers, fluorescent light bulbs, any type of EMF radiation, what happens is you start losing calcium and magnesium ions from your body. Okay? You start losing uh, EMF radiation depletes the body of calcium and magnesium. All right? Just keep that in mind. Um, however, di divalent ions, ions with a double charge, such as calcium, are important in maintaining membrane stability. And their loss would make the membranes more prone to, to the formation of transient pores and increase their general permeability to a wide range of materials. So what are we seeing here? EMF radiation cause, causes the loss of calcium and magnesium from your cells, okay? This causes instability within a person. And this instability causes the various symptoms that we see in individuals with EMS, EMF sensitivity, all right? There is more. Um, let's scroll down. Electrosensitivity. Electrosensitivity, sometimes called electromagnetic hypersensitivity, okay, or EMF sensitivity, is a condition in which some people experience a wide range of unpleasant symptoms when exposed to weak non-ionizing radiation. Only a small proportion of the population is electrosensitive and even smaller proportion is so badly affected that they can instantly tell when a device is switched on or off and that's pretty bad okay just to let you know you know to what extent okay this is actually reaching within our society all right at the other end of the scale, there are people who may be electrosensitive but do not know it because they are chronically exposed to electromagnetic fields and accept their symptoms, headaches, pins and needles, numbness, fatigue, irritability, and many others, as being perfectly normal. Electrosensitivity is in effect a continuum and there is no clear cutoff point. Causes and symptoms of electrosensitivity. The cause of the condition is uncertain and not everyone shows the same symptoms, but there seems to be characterized by having skins that have an unusually high electrical conductance. This is consistent with them having a stratum granulosum, which is abnormally leaky and may account for the high incidence of allergies and chemical sensitivities found in this group. One explanation for this is that they normally have asymptomatic low levels, okay, of calcium and or magnesium in their blood, which gives low concentrations of these ions in their cell membranes. This means that less has to be removed by electromagnetic exposure to produce biologic effects, hence their greater sensitivity. Okay, I just want to point out here that there's a clear connection with calcium and magnesium deficiency or low blood levels of calcium and magnesium with those who are suffering from EMF sensitivity. Okay, so not only are people who are EMF sensitive already dealing with low levels of calcium and magnesium within their blood, but when they, when they, uh, when they find themselves within 
when they get around EMF radiation or when they're exposed to EMF radiation, which we know, which we learned earlier, that EMF radiation, electromagnetic, okay, radiation, we know that we, we learned earlier that this, that, um, this type of radiation depletes the body of magnesium and calcium, okay? So not only are they already ex experiencing low levels of calcium and magnesium, then regular people, when they're exposed to EMF radiation, they lose what little they have left, and this causes a severe instability within their bodies that causes um, the symptoms that we see in people who are EMF sensitive, okay? Now, um, which causes us to be more sensitive than normal people, okay? It causes us to be more sensitive. And this, why, this is why we tend, people with uh, electromagnetic or EMF sensitivity um, tend to be, you know, tend to experience these types of symptoms when, you know, they're around computers or Wi-Fi or um, cell phones, things like that, um, compared to normal, normal people who don't seem to be affected by it, okay? So the range of electromagnetically induced symptoms reported by electrosensitivities, which include skin disorders, var various parathysitis, pins and needles, num numbness, burning sensations, fatigue, muscle cramps, cardiac arrhythmia, and gastrointestinal problems are remarkably similar to those from hypocalcemia, low blood calcium, and hypomagnesemia, low blood magnesium. Okay? So there's a direct link in correlation here between, between um, people who are suffering from this and the levels of their, their, their levels of uh, calcium and magnesium within their bodies. Okay? That being that there are inadequate concentrations of these div divalent ions on the cell membranes to maintain stability which promotes poration and gives rise to an unregulated flow of materials across them, okay? So in other words, if a lack of calcium and magnesium can cause an increase of sensitivity to EMFs, could calcium and magnesium supplementation provide us with a defense against EMF radiation? Um, the answer is yes, in my opinion, according to this research, okay? So just to know, though, that if anyone out there is planning on um, supplementing calcium and magnesium, just be aware that um, this won't happen overnight, okay? It's a gradual process. Um, it took most of us years to get into the condition that we're in now, and it may take a year or more to build up those stores of calcium and magnesium, um, again, to normal healthy levels. Um, but this is the start. This is the start. So um, this is the Quest for Health, once again. And um, if you found this information helpful, feel free to thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Um, once again, uh, all praises be to the one power, Ahaya, in the name of his son, Yeshaya. Shalom.